Uh, so a digital version of the movie will be going out to the Kickstarter backers probably tomorrow. Dan Fight in the back of the room actually helped me set up the uh, the internet things that I need to do that because I don't... What's that? Okay, okay. Well, uh, yeah, and you know, I had initially planned I had initially planned to make this the DVD launch as well. I wanted to do an independent DVD launch here, but I had a problem with my, uh, my Mac went down, so that was out of commission for a little while. The only reason we were even able to do this screening was because Jeff Wallach, who's somewhere in the audience, let me use his computer for a couple of weeks, so that was, that was very good of him. But yeah, we will have, uh, we will have DVDs available soon, and um, probably from there, it'll probably be available on Vimeo On Demand. And, uh, you know, hopefully from there, maybe Netflix. We'll see what happens. I don't know. If anybody has any, uh, you know, if anybody happens to know anybody in charge of a uh, distribution company who might be sympathetic to this, please talk to me afterwards. Uh, anybody else? This, uh, we got one right here. How did you uh, compile all the Occupy footage that you uh, had in the documentary? To be totally honest, I pretty much just took it from the internet. But I credited everybody, and I feel like it's fair use, and I feel like it's in the uh, in the spirit of the Occupy movement to uh, to share footage. So there were some other people who, who shared some of my Occupy footage as well. They used it in their films, such as Dennis Trina Jr., who also appears in the doc. We, we got another one over here. Uh, so I'm from Minneapolis. Okay, uh, cool. Growing up in Minneapolis, uh, with the, uh, and also with filming the Occupy movement shaped you as a filmmaker. Um, well, I mean, definitely I wouldn't have been doing this project had I not gotten involved in Occupy and been shooting there. I mean, I really, you know, I had been doing short films and cable access and things like that before, but it really, I mean, the great thing about the Occupy movement at its best was a situation where people could just step up and, like, realize that they could just do things, I guess. Like, that, you know, it was just, it was, it was more like, you come to the table and what can you do in this situation? A lot of people, like, they, they sort of wait for permission to go out and do some kind of project or wait until somebody's going to fund it. And, you know, I guess, like, my, my point of view is you should just do it if you can. Just just find what you need to do it and then make it happen. And then, you know, it helps to raise funds, too. Uh, Bill? So this is clearly one of the finest films I have ever seen. Uh, Thank you. Uh, at the Academy Awards, what is your speech going to be when you accept that trophy? Um, I, I don't know. I'm going to have to think about that. Are you going to get me into the Academy Awards, Bill? Do you know somebody there? <laughs> Work on that if you can. That would be great. I don't know. How are we doing on time? I'm trying to just take 10 minutes. Maybe I have a few more. Maybe there's no stopwatch. I don't know. Oh, okay. Well, I don't, all right. Are there other, uh, other questions at this point? We get, uh, no? Um, what's the rating on IMDb right now? I believe the rating is uh, 9.4. I think we are listed as the ninth best bio biographical documentary in all of history on IMDb right now. <laughs> so actually, if you, if you happen to enjoy the movie, please do go on IMDb and, and give us a rating. And uh, even better, if you like to write, write us a review, because we don't have any written reviews up there yet. That would be good. Uh, I think, uh, you, here? That's, uh, I will look into that. That's, um, I'm not, I'm not sure how that process works, but I'd be happy to, so, one more. Next project. That is, a, that is a very good question. I mean, I have a few different projects that I'm working on. Uh, John Stephen Dwyer is somewhere in here in the audience, and on St. Patrick's Day, or not St. Patrick's Day, but the St. Patrick's Day Parade we shot the other day, um, a short project about the first openly gay groups that are in the St. Patrick's Day Parade, because for something like 20 years, they've more or less been banned from being in the parade. Um, so that's called Jackets Green, and that'll be coming out sometime in the next several months. And on top of that, I'm also working on, uh, I have since collaborated with Rob Patillo, who is in the film, on a series called Quiet Desperation, and the opposite of Quiet Desperation, which is called Loud Satisfaction. <laughs> Anybody else? Or maybe I should, maybe you guys want to ask Vermin questions? Or here, let's get one more, and then I'll hand off to Vermin. How did you um, get in contact with the Porn Nobis with the music? The Porn Nobis, I think it was uh, my friend Kerry Jo Skoquist, uh, knew them. She is a, she's a cinematographer and animator out of Minneapolis. And um, yeah, they're great. They're a very talented band. They should do more musical score work because they haven't done a hell of a lot of it, but they do a very good job. So, yeah? yeah what was this shot on? It was really nice. 
It was, uh, it was just shot on a Canon 7D, which is, you know, not an incredibly expensive camera. I'm not, I think you can buy the body now for $1,000 or something like that. So, you know, it's, it's, it's not on a phone or anything like that, but you can get some pretty surprisingly good results out of a relatively affordable camera these days. So, it helps to have good audio gear as well, which is something I kind of got together partway through the process of this. If you listen, you notice that some of the interviews sound better than some of the other ones, but even with just the, just the 7D, things work pretty well. But... Um, I don't know, Vermin, do you want to do you want to field a few questions here and then and we'll uh, do some Skype things after that? Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks for coming. Uh, thank you for your support and love. It's been a pretty pretty wild experience, just the, the whole darn thing. And um, I'm pretty happy. Um, I mean, it's not everybody who gets a, a biopic about them and to have one this uh, this darn snazzy is, is really exciting. Um, a couple note, of course, yes, uh, to answer the, the frequently asked question, yes, I am running for president in 2016. Woo! Uh, Woo! Thank you. Um, I am a, I have trying to bump it up to a, a bigger, a better show, a bigger, better level. Um, in fact, my stickers are bigger than they have been in previous years, so um, please help yourself to the, the first uh, 2016 sticker is certainly free. Uh, feel free to uh, purchase merch as you like. I will stick around uh, for anybody who wants a photograph because it seems like a lot of people do. There's a, a, a group on Facebook called Selfies with Furman, and uh, so you can all join that and um, stuff like that. Um, I am, th this election year, I'm going for federal election matching funds through the yeah. Federal Election Commission. That's my project. It was probably been undoable or unseeable uh, in previous years, but since I it bumped up to this crazy level, um, it's possible. I need to re raise $5,000 in each of 20 states. If I can do that, that money will be doubled, and I would have the biggest budget. I would probably, well, I would be more money than I've probably earned in my adult life. Um, <laughs> but uh, I, you know, I would be able to spend it all on nothing but legitimate campaign expenses. <laughs> I could have spent a penny even if not myself. Um, but, but we could have so much fun during the primary season. It's, it has to be spent. We have to burn through it all uh, at the, by the end of the primary season. So that's going to be very exciting. Hopefully, if it's semi-successful, uh, we'll be able to, uh, uh, you know, it'll finance a tour that will follow the primaries from Iowa to New Hampshire to South Carolina like that. Uh, that's my project. Uh, you're welcome to join. There's pledge cards out there. Uh, questions? Yes, please. Anyway. I mean, the movie's pretty much said everything, so. Um, yes? What, how do you plan to tackle health care if you get elected? Um, essentially, my health care program in the past, and I'll fall back onto that canned answer, of course, because it's uh, the simplest and easiest, is promising every American uh, free aspirin, uh, one uh, band-aids uh, available to all, um, uh, one apple per person per day, and uh, if... If you do qualify uh, with a certain uh, government death or health panel, um, you will receive a one-way bus ticket up to Canada because I, I hear their their healthcare system is pretty good. Um, yes, anybody else? Uh, yes. Do you go to a lot of protests around the country? Did you go to any of the Ferguson protests? I did not make it to Ferguson. I mean, I'm not a real protest hopper um, uh, just because I don't have that kind of resources to do that. Um, I generally, you know, the, the election year are the, are the ones that I go, uh, have been gone to. Um, and I had a little bit of uh, reservation about attending a lot of the Black Lives Matter because, um, well, not that, because I wear a stupid boot on my head and I, I was afraid that uh, that it, it would devalue or the, the imagery or, you know, I, I know it was a very serious protest with very serious messages. And um, although it, I, I, in some instances perhaps I could have helped talk down things, but uh, I think uh, the organizers were asking for for white people to step back, and I wanted to respect that, and I didn't want to push my own, you know, self-promotion show into their thing. Um, I did make it at the, at the Martin Luther King March because I, I felt that would be a, a mellow enough, and and, uh, and once again I, I have a lot of constituents in, in the constituent protest space and and, uh, and I will, so I want to be there for that in that context and just to meet some of the people. Yes, next question please. Yes. Yeah, um, they scrape industrial waste out of um, smokestacks at fertilizer factories and they put it in our water and they call it fluoride or fluoridation or you can make <laughs> Sounds good. I like it. Oh, yes, yes, I you know, you'll be there. <laughs> Face of the modern day third party, like 
campaign? That I would not. I would. I would certainly hope that were not the case. Because if that were the case, that would be a very bad thing. Wow. <laughs> they, that's terrible. <laughs> Um, well, once again, the, the whole system is, is totally skewed against the uh, third parties, and ballot access is very difficult. Um, you know, I, I'm going to try and get on a few ballots where it's uh, where it's accessible. Um, I believe that I don't know what the future has for third party candidates. I mean, it would certainly be nice if uh, if there was several other strong parties, uh, but you know, ultimately, it, it's probably just maybe a distraction from the from the main circus that. Uh, Oh, it's it's horrible. It's, that's that's really horrible. <laughs> in my evening. Um, yes. Uh, yes. Uh, how often are you told to grow up, and what's your response? Um, seldom. If never. <laughs> I don't think anybody's ever approached it that way <laughs> before. No. Are are you attempting to do that today, sir? <laughs> All right. If you uh, step outside, if you want to discuss that further. Okay. Literally. Um, yes. Uh, you in the back. Uh, um, there was a clip in the movie where you refer to the like protesters as your kids. Like, can you just, yes. can you describe that like fatherly attitude or like that kinship that you have with them? Um, well, it's more of a feeling. I mean, uh, Mr. McMillan, who will come up briefly, um, one of the major differences, or uh, he rubs a lot of uh, my constituents or, or some of my constituents the wrong way uh, because they feel he's he is paternal because he does refer to himself as uh, you know a big papa type of candidate, and of course that's sort of the conservative. World view is that you know we need a big strong daddy and, and, and that that sort of thing and that's sort of the framework uh, that they try and sell a lot of the authoritarian policies through. Um, I think when I was using the term, it was just more of of uh, affection. I mean, I, I felt like generationally they're my kids. I mean, you know, they are the next generation, uh, and they are coming up, and and, uh, and I felt you know, and I and I felt if I framed it like that, perhaps maybe the cops would listen a little bit. I, I don't know. Yes. Uh, have you spoken to the producers of House of Cards about possibly making an appearance? Mm. <laughs> no. <laughs> yes, yes you, you, I know you had your hand up a bit. Oh. Yes. Uh, what is your opinion of the My Little Pony franchise and TV show? <laughs> well, we all love little ponies. <laughs> yes, I'm not big on major mega entertainment corporations and all that, but you know, I, I, the bronies have been a very, very important constituent base for me. <laughs> I, I believe that they have really uh, propelled me, especially in 2012. Most, uh, most, if not a lot of the meme art was produced by uh, by MLP fans, and I do personally believe that friendship is magic. It does completely fit in nicely and dovetails with my belief system of anarchism and mutual aid. Uh, my poop was a neighbor's. Uh, it belonged to his father. Uh, he was a fisherman. He was a Norwegian character. And uh, I saw them in his shed one day and asked him if I could use them. And yes. Um, yes. Oh, I noticed that you earlier you had like a smaller boot. How many boots have you had? Uh, half dozen. I think it's hard to say. Yes? The unfortunate event that the Olympics come to Boston, what would you overdo your plans for participating in that event? Uh, peacekeeping. <laughs> yes? It's hard to say. I mean, a, a lot of the things I experienced in the moment, I'll, I'll say one of the most intense things that I ever experienced was uh, in 04, uh, no, 03, it was the World Economic Forum in New York City, and uh, it was one of the, I get arrested very, very few times for, for what I do, and, and I place myself in this situation where I'm between cops and protesters, it's amazing how few times I've I've been uh, arrested or, or whatever, but the, one of the few times I had was part of this unpermitted march in New York City, and we were all cuffed, and um, and we were in the in the uh, transport vehicle, and uh, and this one guy was freaking out, freaking out because they put the cuffs on our hands so tight that uh, we were losing sensation. I mean, they, they were they were felt first felt that they were asleep, and then you're just going to feel them. And this guy was freaking out, and we were and just trying to you know hug somebody, um, you know, in that situation when you're. In a, a cop car with your hands cuffed behind your back, and somebody's really freaking out. You're really trying to calm them down. That that's intense. Uh, 
Um, you know, and I remember melting down after the Pittsburgh Summit in 08, and I just, you know, I mean, usually I'm on top of it, but, uh, you know, I start to wonder at times, why do we put ourselves in these situations that are so, so intense? Um, I'm happy to say that in 2012, I mean, I'm feeling, I was feeling pretty good. I feel like I really arrived. The, the, the mutation of the two things, you know, the thing that I do on the streets, which, you know, and then when the boot became famous and, and being able to bring the boot into that, and I think it just brought it up to a whole other level and gave me the opportunity to be, I had so much more flexibility. Seeing the cops, like, go down the line and say, hey, it's that guy, it's that guy again. <laughs> Thinking that I was more important than I was or whatever, but, um, it, 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 yeah. Um, right of assembly, right of free speech, um, and, and laws that uh, prohibit that and try and clamp down. And uh, yeah, I, th I think it's the one thing that everybody who has any issues and is willing to express their issues, it's one thing we have, all have in common, and that's that First Amendment and the ability to express them. So I, I, th I consider myself a, a First Amendment activist. Yes? Oh, I have no idea what I'm supposed okay. to ask. I've thought of like five questions. No oh, wait, I've yes. got one. <laughs> Um, nope, I haven't been invited. I've got a few nibbles on commencement speeches, but you know, I guess. Do I get to choose my own pony? If I want her pony, can I have her in the beach parade? Can I have her pony in the Well, those are certainly questions to be answered by the pony panels. Did your wife come with you on a lot of the campaign trails? And if she, has she ever considered becoming a part of your political campaign? Definitely not. Definitely no. not. <laughs> she doesn't interest her. She, yeah, she's not a performer. It doesn't interest her being part of that show. And, uh, and she's just seen it all so much before. She just watches my back now. <laughs> what is the best thing about time travel? Um, well, that I could come back here and be with you all. <laughs> 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 Finally got one. Okay. I'm a writer. Yes. Do you want to make a cameo in one of my books? Definitely. <laughs> Definitely, yeah. Yeah. Yes. How do you think about being the liaison between protesters and police? Um, just take a breath. Just sort of ground. You know, I mean, I, th I, I think I'll go back to that question because in this movie I remember like yelling at the as these cops to stop the violence and you know yeah, I mean, there's a certain amount of helplessness when, when real bad shit's going down but um, then you have to step back and do what you can do which is sort of keep the crowd calm and, uh, and like that. Anyway, yes. Um, what's your relationship with the Green Party? I mean there's often going to be in the documentary the Green Party has Mayor and Joe Stein but, um, but how about your relationship? Uh, officially, um, I, I have no official affiliation with them. I, 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 I mean back in the 80s I think I was at the first convention of the Greens um, but that was more with the Yippies at the time and um, Ralph Nader, I've met him a few times. Uh, he has used me as an example at, at various stumps uh, on the campaign. I think one of the, I'd like to paraphrase him when he mentioned to the, the people that, you know, I think that's when he framed it that I understood that, you know, I have constituents. I, I mean, yeah, okay, the guy has constituents and his, con his constituents' needs are not being served. And that was one of his, he used me as a talking point to point out uh, that, you know, a flaw in democracy. Um, Jill Stein, of course, I was friendly enough to let her use my megaphone. <laughs> um, but uh, what this movie doesn't show during that scene also, it, during her, her stump speech, which, which was fun, when I watch that, I can see, because I know I do it myself, um, you know, she starts sort of looking from side to side, and her eyes get this look, and she's just, what she's doing is just trying, she's sort of rolling off what she said a million times before. And, uh, and I found that interesting. Um, but it, what the movie doesn't show is that she was, being heckled by people too, and they were heckling her with ponies. <laughs> they, were, they, were, they, were, they were being my supporters and heckling her. <laughs> um, so that was sort of funny. Yes? Um, my question is, at one point, uh, what point did you, sorry, I'm going from the mayor to the mayor of the United States, the president of the United States, 
The whole thing has just been a very, it was a slow evolution. Baltimore ran for mayor, it wasn't even political, it was just I had nothing better to do at the time. I was good. I was fried out on the town, I had to get out of the town, what am I doing in this town, what will keep me in this town, I know I'll run for mayor. And, uh, and then I left the town because I was burnt out on it. And, and then a year later came by and it's like, oh shoot, I said I was going to run for mayor. So I did a drug study, a month-long drug study to get enough money to get the computer typesetting, to get the printing done, and to like go there and, and do it. And essentially it was just a two or three day run, but from there, then I I ran for mayor of Detroit, then I went mayor of the nuclear test site, and I started attending these rainbow. And what happened in Baltimore that really took me away was the Great Peace March rolled through, and um, and that changed me politically and, and got me on the trail of like anarchists and rainbow gatherings and uh, traveling around to the protest circuit. And so I was given this sort of national base where I was doing, you know, running. Right, I wasn't just in Baltimore anymore. I was in these situations where I was in with a lot of people from all around the country and around the world. And so that gave me the base, and so I think that's how it expanded. And then the fact that New Hampshire is so close to Massachusetts, which is where I was living, it was very easy for me to go up and start harassing the uh, the primaries and, <laughs> and start utilizing the primaries as this the form, uh, this canvas to, with which to have all sorts of fun. You should all come up. You all definitely got to come up. Yes. Uh, I heard you before you said you were a uh, um, no, but uh, early on in the 80s, I did have some affiliations in France. The, like, the did, I, I would certainly say so. <laughs> in fact, one of the presentations that I do present that I'd be happy to come back sometime and uh, presenting is the history of uh, satire in politics, which does uh, starts goes back from ancient Egyptian gestures um, through the Renaissance clowns on, on up through heavy, heavy influence on, on the hippies and then uh, various French candidates. Uh, so. Totally, it's, I think it's part of the same tradition, just sort of that street theater, that uh, bringing the absurdity uh, out into public, and you know, just once again, simple, elegant, effective. What's simpler, what's more elegant, what's more effective? You know, bringing a pig out, running for president, what's more simple, what's more elegant, what's more, I mean, there's these simple, elegant, effective things, giant toothbrush, pretty simple, you know, and uh, the, these symbols that, uh, that you can just grasp and grab, and, and you know, cultural points, uh, touch points, you know, zombies, boom, it, it, it's everybody, everybody knows these things, so. I mean, from my perspective, what I'm doing is pretty simple, and uh, I think other people can do it too. Uh, yes, yes, Steve. I bet. Is do I hear Jimmy McMillan off in the distance? Oh hell yeah! Sorry. Yes. Together, and let us use the internet. His image is awesome. Jimmy was amazing, and the, the people just, you know, when they saw the two of us together, the double meme team, it just blew people's socks off. <laughs> Mr. McMillan was recently, uh, he's, he's in an eviction struggle in uh, New York City as we speak. Um, pick up Jimmy, pick up, he's a direct test. Pick up Jimmy, he's probably on the other line, he's a very busy man. Pick up Jimmy, pick up. Okay, okay, we're gonna call him another way. Okay, we'll see if we can pick him up, uh, yeah. In the meantime, uh, any, uh, another quick question? Yes. Uh, what is it? Uh, especially in the internet age now, when we started protesting with what the kind of internet culture is there is now. Um, especially since everyone now has such a vocal voice, and everybody has a voice, would you say that in um, certain areas or certain dimensions that are construed as Maybe so. I mean, I, I found that, uh, you know. You have to Can y'all see me? Have a question for Mr. McMillan. Okay. Uh, no one's starstruck. Folks, how we doing? How Berman doing? Pretty good. Uh, well, I represent the rent for damn my body, as you know. So, okay, if I talk, Berman, you got something to say. Okay. <laughs> 
right, do we have a question for Mr. McVillan? Hello? Yes, we have a question in the audience. Hold on, Jimmy. Can I, can I be heard? Uh, yeah. Yep. yep. Yes. Mr. McVillan, you said you can, had, can uh, anybody hear me? If you, if you hear me, clap. <laughs> <with, laughs> hold on, Jimmy. We, we got a question for you here. You said you tried out a number of different types of facial hair. Could you tell us about some of the other tests before this one? The question involves uh, in the movie. I, I have a. I can't hear that. Okay. In, in the movie, in, in the movie, uh, you referenced your, your uh, facial hair looking like balls. Now, now, so and, 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 and in the movie, uh, you 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 had mentioned uh, that it took you a, a long time, two decades, to achieve that uh, chin full of balls look. Um, could, and the question was. Could could you tell us about some of the other facial hair experiments that you conducted? <laughs> what did your beard look like before? I can barely, I can barely hear you guys over there. Where do I, I love the crowd. I hope folks, how y'all doing? <laughs> The question was, what other, they were talking about your chin, chin hair looked like ball, and wanted to know what other uh, hair experience you had on your chin before you got that magic uh, look. Uh, well, I, I got this look for people to understand that I'm not just an uh, average person. I wanted to get more attention on my issues by not looking like everyone else. Yeah. I looked at Dr. King, he had a clean shave, Jesse Jackson, Al Shaw, but I didn't want to look like none of them. I wanted to look like an American who can reach out to the people as an older guy to let folks know that I have the experience to help get this country headed in the right direction. Right now we are going in a bad direction. It's why I support Berman Supreme and his, his message to, for change for the people that he come encounter with. So my message is different. And it's, all, it's really the same message. I just twisted around the and said, let me have a presentation and let that be with my look. And it, it seems to work. Yes, it does. <laughs> Thank you. Another question. Uh, yes. I don't know if you plan to run in any elections coming up. Oh. Are you going to run <laughs> in any elections soon? Yes, I am. Uh, I wanted to talk to Berman to see what he wanted to do uh, in 216. Um, I had first put out that I, I was going to support what he'll Rick Clinton because I had uh, I had a I'm a Vietnam veteran and I'm exposed to Agent Orange and I had a little me a medical setback a uh, month ago and I'm on, on I'm in treatment now. Uh, and as soon as my health get right, I will make a decision after July if I'm going to run. Um, suffering with PTSD and flashbacks of the war. I find, I always had this, but I found a way to put myself, pull myself together and think of the soldiers I left behind. And they had give me the energy that I look at. I see the nieces and nephews and uncles of a lot of the soldiers that I served with never made it back. So I will get my health right. I will continue to run for this country. This country needs to get this act together fast. And this is what my, I took an oath going to Vietnam, and I'm still on the oath to serve this country, to help this country go in the right direction. Right now, we are going in a bad direction. Running for president now seems to be a place for on-the-job training. People don't have four years of losing everything they have within that four-year span, and that has to stop. Someone has to get it right, and I believe that's what I'm here to do, and Burma Supreme is here to do as well. Where are you on the internet? <laughs> are we good? <laughs> I, I guess Google. Okay. <laughs> Uh, where can you everything look like things are frozen? Yeah, uh, it's a little cold out still, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right, Jimmy. Well, thank you very much. Can you hear us? And now we want to. Jimmy McBeal, everybody. <laughs> Anything else you want to say? Other screenings coming up, or? Um, no.
unplanned in the moment, but do go to who is. If you're interested in other screenings, uh, check out whoisverminsupreme.com and additional screenings will be listed there. So, and if you have any of your college kids want to bring them to your campus, uh, you let me know. We'll find a group to sponsor it. There's all manner of merchandise out there.